Hey everyone, I'm uh, I'm trying to go live on two um, platforms here uh, simultaneously. This was not a scheduled live. Um, I don't have any of my team here. I don't have my kids here to help me. Um, but I just um, so forgive me. I mean, there's no lighting on. I didn't shave today. Uh, I'm, I'm, um, I'm overwhelmed, as I know so many of you are, with what we are witnessing on the world stage. And make no mistake about it, it is not that we are witnessing on the stage of Israel and Gaza. This is not a war between Israel and Hamas. This is a war between freedom and tyrannical evil. And what is at stake immediately, of course, is the safety and security of the state of Israel, and all of her citizens, which includes almost 2 million Arab Israelis, Muslim Arab Israelis, Christian Arab Israelis, almost 2 million, close to 20% of Israel's population is Muslim Arab, Christian Arab. And so not only their safety, but the safety and security of the whole world is at stake. And like many of you, I am absolutely blown away. I, I don't have words to describe the shock and horror of the deception. It is either willful ignorance or deception or outright evil. Those are the only three options that I see. Willful ignorance, it's a willful ignorance because if you go, if you study, if you look at the reality of the conflict, then you will understand the truth of the situation and not the emotional clickbait heart grab that pulls you into this false narrative of oppressed and oppressor. They are trying to Put this into a context of oppressed and oppressor, colonialism, expansionism, patriarchy, and it's complete lies. But you are either willfully ignorant or you're deceived which there's a link between willful ignorance and deception because you have a responsibility to question. You have a responsibility to get to the truth, not to just throw up some slogan, not to just join the mob. You have a responsibility to understand the facts on the ground and the facts on the ground are that Israel has offered peace to the Palestinians since the moment of Israel's creation in 48 and even beforehand. In the moment of Israel's creation, David Ben-Gurion extended his hand in peace 
to the Palestinians and the Arabs all around. And what did they get? They got an attack of five armies in 1948. Please listen to me. There are dozens, dozens of Muslim majority countries in the world. Many of them only Muslim. No other religion is allowed because of the theocracy of radical Islam. There are dozens of Muslim countries around the world. There are dozens of Christian-oriented countries. They may just be culturally Christian. They may not, we may not view them as Christian in a sense, but nations that celebrate Christmas and Easter, and they are culturally dozens. Germany, France, Denmark, Sweden, Mexico. There is one, one tiny, tiny Jewish state in the entire world. Only one. Only one. And the Jews have extended. Can I tell you something? Please listen to me. I have been 30 years going to Israel. More than 30 years now. More than 30 years. Hit the share button. Get the word out. Hit the share button, everybody, please. More than 30 years I've been going to Israel. Do you know what I've never heard in 30 years? Never once from my hundreds, probably thousands of Jewish friends tens of thousands of conversations, tens of thousands of conversations with my Jewish Israeli friends. Do you know what I've never heard? I've never heard, well, we've got to get rid of the Palestinians. I've never heard we've got to, we've got to ethnically cleanse. We've got to get rid of the Pal. I've never heard I'm my hand to God in 30 years. The only thing I have heard from tens of thousands of conversations is this. We just want to live in peace with them. That's what I've heard. We just want to live in peace with them. I've heard it over and over and over and over again. What part do you not understand that there exists something called genocidal, pure evil? Do you not understand that a generation ago, my grandparents' generation, if it had not been for Winston Churchill, if it had not been for Roosevelt, if it had not been for the Allies, Hitler would have taken over with the ideology of Nazism. He would have taken over nation after nation after nation after nation. We, we talk about 6 million Jews dying in the Holocaust. It wasn't only 6 million Jews. It was gypsies, Romanos. It was the disabled. It was gays. It was how many soldiers, European soldiers, American soldiers, lost their lives because of a genocidal maniac named Hitler. What part do you not understand that Hamas and Hezbollah and Khomeini, these are evil, genocidal, demonized tyrants who are coming after you. They're not coming after Israel. They don't give a damn about a Palestinian state. They don't care about a Palestinian state. What part of this do you not understand? 
Hamas is not fighting for a Palestinian state. Hezbollah is not fighting for a Palestinian state. Iran doesn't care about the Palestinians. They are fighting for the restoration of the caliphate. What is the caliphate? The caliphate is radical, theofascist, Islamic Sharia law applied to the whole world. To you. To you. You know the old poem. First they came for the Jews, and I wasn't a Jew, so I didn't speak out. And then they came for, and then they came for, and I didn't speak out. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak up for me. Please hit the share button right now. It's one of the few things we can do right now. Please follow me on social media. Please turn on the notification buttons. And please understand we are at war. We are at war. Israel is not at war. We are at war. Who's we, Robert? The Christians and the Jews? No, no. Any decent human being who believes in human rights, in genuine respect and tolerance, and freedom of religion and freedom of speech. Any decent human being who doesn't want to live under totalitarianism is at war. Israel just happens to be fighting the fight on the front lines. What part of this do you not understand? Someone will find it for me. I was so impressed. Barack Obama, and I, I looked for the, um, I don't look for, I, I looked for the actual quote and I will find it. I'll post it. But very recently, Barack, Barack Obama, this is not right-wing Republican Donald Trump. Barack Obama said, the Israelis have made meaningful effort after meaningful effort to improve the life of the Palestinians and to allow them to have a state. I remember 2000, it was either 2000 or 2001, Camp David, Yasser Arafat, Bill Clinton, and Ehud Barak. I have friends who were in the room when the negotiations took place. And Yasser Arafat was offered 97% of everything that the Palestinians were asking for. And Bill Clinton, again, not a right wing anything. Bill Clinton said to Arafat, what are you doing? This is your chance to make peace. This is your chance for your people. And Arafat said, if I take this deal, they'll assassinate me. Who will assassinate him? Do you think the Israelis would have assassinated him? No. Who was Yasser? Arafat, terrified of. Radical Islam. Don't tell me that you care about the Palestinians. If you cared about the Palestinians, you would be supporting Israel in the eradication of Hamas. If you care about whatever percentage of the Palestinian people are peaceful. And I have to say this, and this is not going to be popular. There's, I can't worry any longer about being popular. The sad truth is many Palestinians, many, I'm not going to put a percentage, but many have been radicalized. Why? Because the Palestinian school system promotes Jew hatred, promotes the eradication of Israel, if you become a suicide bomber, you get a soccer stadium named after you and you get your your whole family gets money for life. And you become a shahid, you become a martyr. Hit the share button. It's one of the few things we can do. Follow me on social. Talk to your pastor. There is no other subject 
that a church should be focused on right now, except telling the truth of Jesus Christ, the Jew, and standing with his biological family, the Jewish people, in the midst of this fight. You can stand with us right now and you can stand with them. Go to eagleswings.org forward slash frontlines. Eagleswings.org forward slash frontlines or forward slash urgent response. Somebody help me and put it in. We fed 10,000 soldiers on Thursday. Yesterday, we fed 10,000 soldiers. Three days ago, we gave $40,000 to the emergency first responders. We bought equipment. Some of you saw that online. I need you to go right now and make a donation. You say, I already made a donation. Please give another one. Eagleswings.org forward slash urgent response. Talk to your pastor. Pastor, what are we doing? Bill Clinton said to Yasser Arafat, what are you doing, Arafat? This is your opportunity to be a hero. This is your opportunity to be the one who brings peace to your people. This is the opportunity. And what did Arafat say? He said, they'll kill me. Who was Arafat, Arafat afraid would kill him? Not the Israelis. Arafat knew that radical Islam would kill him. Please listen to me. I don't care. I mean, I care. I don't mean it that way. I care if you're a Christian. I believe in Jesus with all my heart, and I pray that all come to know him. But the fight in Israel is not a fight that you come to because I have this theology, or I have that view of the last days, or I have this political party. This is a human fight. What kind of world are we going to live in? Are we going to live in a world of radical... The Could some... Riddle me this. Riddle me this. Explain this to me. How in the world at these pro-Hamas rallies are you seeing all kinds of rainbow flags at the pro-Hamas rallies when in Iran... In these Muslim countries, if you're gay, you're assassinated. You're killed. You're murdered. Do you understand the twistedness that has filled the, the American university campus? We have the ultra, ultra left wing in bed with the Islamic theofascism who will kill them. Immediately. What part of this equation don't you understand? The one nation, the one nation in the Middle East where gay rights are completely uh, upheld, the state of Israel. The one nation in the Middle East where freedom for all religions completely upheld the state of Israel. The one nation in the Middle East where the Christian population is growing the state of Israel. Women can drive. Women can vote. Minorities can vote. Right of peaceful assembly. What kind of world do you want to live in? I am appealing to you. Please understand, this is not they are at war. This is we are at war. Who is we? We is any decent human being. Any decent, caring, kind, fair-minded human being is at war with a radicalized tyranny called Hamas. And there is one solution for Hamas, and that is to eradicate them from the face of the earth. And doing that, tragically, is going to involve many civilian deaths. And that is sad. 
And that is horrible. And that is terrible. But Israel has endured thousands of rockets falling on her since 2005 when she withdrew from Gaza. You go to these protests, hit the share button, please, right now. Hit the share button. If you're not following, follow right now and turn on notifications. This is war and we've got to stay connected. Go please right now, eagleswings.org forward slash urgent response, eagleswings.org forward slash urgent response. Please make a gift today. No gift is too small. We are every single day getting requests from the front line. I need your help. It is overwhelming the requests that we're getting. It's We're sending it over. We sent uh, 25, no, we sent $40,000 on Friday. We're sending $25,000 on Monday. Eagleswings.org forward slash urgent response or forward slash front lines. This is a war for the future of humanity. If you are getting caught up trying to figure out what side you're on and trying to understand the fairness of it and all of that, then you might as well try to understand Hitler. And do you know what? Listen to me. Listen, people. That's what Neville Chamberlain did. That's what the prime minister of Great Britain named Know Your History, named Neville Chamberlain did. He went and he said, I'm going to negotiate with uh, with Hitler. And he negotiated with Hitler and he gave him Czechoslovakia. He gave him Czechoslovakia. And he came back to Great Britain and he said, I have brought peace in our time. And only Winston Churchill, who people looked at like a radical. People looked at like a a fear monger. People looked at like an extremist. Only Winston Churchill stood up and said, what are you doing? You're appeasement is never going to solve the problem. If you've got a tumorous, cancerous growth, what do you do? You cut it out. You cut it out. And guess what? In cutting it out, some of the healthy tissue has to go as well. It's tragic. But you got to cut around the tumor. And healthy tissue goes. There will be tragic, heartbreaking civilian deaths from whatever portion of the Palestinian people are not radicalized. And many of them are radicalized, not through any fault of their own, but because the United Nations and America and the European Union gave billions of dollars, billions of dollars to the Palestinians without any accountability. So give them the money, but let them still, in the school system, train them to be Israel haters, Jew haters. Continue to allow martyrdom and shahid, suicide bombing, to be glorified in the society. And this is what you get. This is what you get. Beloved, please understand, and I am not, I I have avoided with all of my heart becoming someone who I have avoided, I, 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 I read the Bible, I study the Bible, I know the book of Revelation, but I have avoided creating timelines you know, superimposing apocalypse over news events. But I'm telling you something. This is straight out of the pages of scripture. This this may well be it. I don't know. It takes a lot for me to say that because I am not one who pushes a radical end times agenda. But Israel is being surrounded by her enemies and the church is asleep. 
most of the church in the West has already been seduced by an antichrist spirit. Most of the church in the West is lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. Most of the church in the West does not have oil in their lamps. Most of the church in the West is dead asleep. If I'm honest, in the natural, I think it's too late for America. But I'm a person who does not live my life solely by natural statistics. But God. God can turn this around. God can turn this around. If my people called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear. Hit the share button, please. Tag somebody, please. 2006. 2006, I started preaching a message. What was the message? The message was entitled, Israel, a dividing line. I had my team go back and look up the date where I first preached the message. It was 2006. I have been shouting at the top of my lungs for 25 years, begging the Christian church to understand that alignment with God's covenant for Israel and the Jewish people is not about blowing shofars and beating tambourines and fast songs and D minor. It's about understanding that God is a God of covenant. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if the church does not wake up to the fact that our theology and the core that I know I'm worked up, folks, but if, if this is not the time to get worked up, when is? If this is not the time to lift my voice, I don't know when is. Do you see what is happening on university colleges across this nation? Do you see what is happening in major cities across this nation? This is blindness. This is ignorance. This is deception. And it is evil. Eagleswings.org forward slash urgent response eagleswings.org forward slash urgent response. If you've already given, please give again. We're giving again this week. More gifts going out the door. We need your help. I need you to partner with us. 2000, when did I write this book? 2011. Do you see the title? 2011. There's Facebook, there's Instagram. No, we can't. Radical Islam, militant secularism, and the myth of coexistence, 2011. I, I don't know what else to do. Watchman on the Wall manual. We wrote the Watchman on the Wall course. Maybe. When jihad comes to your town, you'll listen. And it will be too late. This is not a time for popularity. This is not a time for equivocation. This is not a time for compromise. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. This is a time for war. There's a time for peace and there's a time for war. Israel has made, in the 75 years of her history, Israel has made a time for peace over and over and over again with the Arab world. Israel created peace with Egypt. Not great friendship, but peace. The Abraham Accords created peace with progressive Muslim nations. This is not a time for peace. This is a time for war. 
Jesus is the Prince of Peace, but he's also a mighty man of war. If you've not watched my sermon from two Sundays ago, go to my YouTube. Robert Stearns, not the music YouTube, but the other one on YouTube, and watch the sermon, A Time for War. Share it with your pastor. I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for Israel. I'm praying for all of Israel. I'm praying for the element of the Palestinian people who are peaceful. There are many. There are many peaceful Palestinians. Many are radicalized. Many are deceived, but there are many peaceful Palestinians. They are caught in an unthinkable situation, and my heart breaks for them. But the only way out, if the world wanted to solve this problem, Israel has been out of Gaza for 20 years. Israel has been out of Gaza for 20 years. So if the universities and the European Union and the United Nations and everyone else wanted to solve this problem, they've had 20 years to do it. Gaza could have been Dubai. Do you know how beautiful Gaza is? It's on the Mediterranean Sea. It's a coastal town on the Mediterranean. It could have been a Dubai in the Middle East. They could have come in and they could have said, we want peace and prosperity for our people. They could have begun, they could have taken the money that they've built the tunnels with and they could have built schools and they could have built, biz, built businesses and they could have built a future. Have you noticed they don't have water? Have you noticed they don't have food? But what do they have? Rockets. They're continuing to send their rockets. Rocket after rocket after rocket. Don't have money for food. Don't have money for water. But they got plenty of money for rockets. Do not be deceived. Israel would accept peace and prosperity for the Palestinian people tomorrow if there was a normalization within Palestinian thinking and an acceptance of the Jewish state of Israel. Do you want to end? I, 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 listen, the next time somebody fights with you, say this. Say these words. Do you accept the existence of the Jewish state of Israel? That's the question. Do you accept the existence of the Jewish state of Israel? If their answer is no, stop talking to them. There's nothing else to discuss. Because what they're calling for in very polite terms is the, is, the, is the extermination of the Jewish people. That's your question. Do you accept the existence of the Jewish state of Israel? That's the question. And yeah, David, that's right. They pause. Well, because nobody thinks. Anybody, everybody feels. Nobody wants to think. Everybody wants to feel. Because we've created a whole system right now of oppressed and oppressor. That's not the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is that the Jewish people would accept a peaceful future for the Palestinian people tomorrow if the Palestinians wanted peace. The Jewish people left Gaza and what they got in return was Hamas. And to the north they have Hezbollah. And in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, they have Fatah, which is utterly corrupt and utterly unable to govern. And the jihad that they are facing, it's not coming to America. It is already here. There is already an intellectual jihad on the university campuses of America. There is an intellectual jihad on the university campuses of America already. And it will turn violent. It will turn violent in this nation. 
Israel is not at war. We are at war. Wake up.